everyone! I can see the first people uh, coming online. So, welcome to uh, this new uh, flower tutorial with Squire's Kitchen. Um, for those who don't know me, I'm Graziella from Design Sucre and I live south of France uh, where I run my own business called Design Sucre. Again, uh, feel free to um, follow me if you'd like. And uh, thank you Squares Kitchen, my amazing sponsor, uh, for this uh, new opportunity to uh, be with you online and create a new flower together. So, for today, uh, as it's um, Father's Day very soon, we are going to be making this very pretty little baby here. So, we've picked a, a My Dad's Rose variety and I'm going to show you how to um, create it. I made this one yesterday and uh, I've got a few leaves ready for you on the side but I'll show you the whole process. I hope you enjoy it. Um, I will tell you all the products I've used uh, during this demo. Um, so feel free to have a look on Squire's Kitchen website and if you don't know them they're, they're just amazing. They've got really really great products so um, let's just get started. So let me just tilt my camera. So that's it. So the first steps, so I'm going to try and fit it in an hour uh, because that's quite a long process. I'm going to be using uh, Squire's Kitchen Florist Paste. Uh, if you have seen the previous demo, I really like this paste. It dries super fast. You can roll it super, super thin, like cigarette paper thin. It comes in a whole range of color. It is really amazing. Although I tend to use the white one because, well, I can adapt it to my needs and it's a lot easier for my stock, but you can buy it in many, many different shades and different sizes of packagings. So uh, feel free to have a look on their website. So for this one, I've used uh, Squire's Kitchen's white and I've already got my colors ready here. And I'm just going to tell you what I've been using. For this very light pink, I've used the rose gel color. And for this very dark one here, I have used, um, let me just check, because I've, I've been writing it down. Um, so these two here, so I've got three parts of rose and one part of cyclamen lemon color. So that's to achieve this very pretty color gonna show you so this is a very very dark um, sort of pinkish color and that's the first color we're going to use um, just to tell you a little bit more about what we're going to be using as well um, for the petals I am using this um, set of cutters it is from Squire's Kitchen as well it comes in different sets I'm only going to use the sizes from uh, so it's called Squares Kitchen Multi Flower Curler Set One uh, A and One B. But if you really like sugar flowers, it also comes in a lovely set of ten sizes of cutters. Um, and obviously, these were created by a sugar florist that's called Naomi Yamamoto with Squires Kitchen. And feel free to have a look on the website. She is selling an amazing book uh, with tons of sugar flowers in there. We will use for the calyx an orchard calyx cutter. That's the 70 millimeters uh, XXL, uh, just for the reference. I think it's R11C, uh, also available on the website. And for the uh, the veiner, I am using uh, one of my uh, veiners from um, Sugar Delights. But if you want to stick to uh, the great um, Squire's Kitchen products, you can use the Rose Tea Very Large um, rose veiner. It's a seven centimeters veiner. Uh, I forgot to mention if you've got any questions I'm trying to read at the same time so feel free to um, post me some um, some messages. I'm trying to have a look. Salut de uh, Hello John. Hello Julie. Oh I haven't seen all those messages. Hello Sandra. Hi Matthew. Um, hello Edna. Hello, Nixita. Nice to see you all. Um, so uh, we're going to get started with this. And if you've got any questions at any point, just uh, feel free to stop me. So for this one, I am not going to use the smaller gutter from the set, but I'm going to start with the second size of gutter. And I'm going to use the darkest shade of pink that I've got here. So again, this is a mix of rose and cyclamen gel colors from Squire's Kitchen. Three parts of rose and one part of cyclamen. 
I'm going to condition my board with a little bit of uh, Crisco or Trex, depending on where you live. Uh, so just a thin layer, remove the excess, and I'm going to roll my paste. So roll out the paste. If it's so, you want to have Crisco uh, at the bottom on the board, and if it's sticky on the top, you can have uh, you can add a little bit of corn flour. And you want to roll it quite thin. So when I say thin, it's probably half a millimeter. Again, I'm sorry, I don't really speak inches, so I will stick to uh, good old centimeters and millimeters. Um, hi Sam, yes of course, uh, we will list uh, all the equipment that we've used, I've, I've already got that list ready here, so I can um, just write it and post it on Esquire's website, no problem at all. Hello Susan! Ooh, nice to see you all here, wow, -y. quite a lot of people. Okay, so I've rolled it quite thin. And you want to turn it upside down so that the side that was sticking to your board is now going to stick to your cutter. But you can have a little bit of corn flour, just a tiny, tiny bit, just to make things easier for you. Probably can add a little bit here as well. And I've got less issues. So I'm going to cut five of those. To make it easier for the uh, other petals, the uh, light pink ones, I've already pre-cut them so they take a lot less time for you. Hello Patricia! So basically it is that soft because I've been working it a lot with my hands. I've added a little bit of um, Trexel Crisco, mine is Crisco, uh, in there to condition it. And obviously, as I've gone for a very dark color, I've added quite a lot of uh, gel color in there, which has made it slightly softer. Uh, but um, yeah, that's just the uh, normal Squire's Kitchen uh, with a lot of dust. But if you work it well, like if you condition it well, it needs to be really warmed out until you kind of get that octopus leg consistency. You know, something very, very soft. So that's what you want to um, achieve. Hello, 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 Syrah. So I've got my uh, five petals here, uh, which I'm going to use in a minute. But before that, I need to show you how to create the center. I've completely forgotten that one. So I'm just plugging my uh, little... Um, uh, hot glue gun and I've got here a little uh, ball of foam it's a three centimeters diameter so it's about three centimeters and I'm going to use an 18 gauge wire using some pliers I'm gonna bend a hook so I'm pushing with my thumb to have an opened hook so nothing's closed it's an opened one and let me just put that a little bit more straight. With uh, my exact own knife, I'm going to just cut inside the ball here so that I can insert the wire a little bit more easily, making some room for the wire. Just going to wait for this to um, heat up a little bit, which shouldn't take long at all. So in the meantime, if you've got any questions, feel free again to ask talking about the colors because I was talking about the colors um, they come in a lovely set both gel colors and dusting uh, powders like him and um, and I think they're back in stock uh, at Squires so feel free to uh, have a look and grab a lovely little kit they're super uh, handy and useful you can mix all the colors together they blend in really really well where do you store your petals um, so do you mean these ones? These ones are just in a, it's just like a document folder. Um, so that just makes it super easy for me. I can open it up and pick my petals. Uh, I know some brands sell um, some some of these, like I think um, maybe Wilton does, but uh, I'd rather use my little plastic here, which is super handy and a lot bigger. 
just checking the glue yeah that's ready so just make sure you fill that hole with some glue okay and I'm going to use a little bit of glue on my hook here just to make sure everything is secured okay and you just want to insert it quite deep inside the bowl and I'm using a little bit of Crisco or Trex on my finger just so that I can press on the hot glue without it sticking to my fingers and that way you're not going to burn yourself. Alors Déborah, ça y est, c'est revenu en stock pour les mallettes. Donc tu peux aller faire un tour sur le site de Squires et, euh, et attraper ta petite mallette au vol. So Deborah was just asking about the lovely kits from Squires Kitchen and she was saying it was out of stock. But no, it's back in stock, so feel free to have a look. So that's it. I've got my uh, main stem ready and I'm going to go back to my lovely petals. Uh, so the glue, Patricia, is just normal hot glue. It's a hot glue gun. Uh, it's nothing edible. You've got to bear in mind that we are using a cell bud and a wire. None of these are edible, so it doesn't really matter that this glue is not edible either because you're not going to eat any of this. That said, it is perfectly safe to go on a cake because it will all be covered um, in flour paste, which is edible, and your wire will be inserted in the cake using a poser pick. So uh, nothing non-edible will be touching your cake. Uh, instead of a foam bowl, can we use simple white fondant and roll it in a bowl dry it and use it. Of course you could add, you could use uh, fondant, although I would recommend you would use gum paste because fondant would take ages to dry. The only thing, my only, my only concern is, well two concerns in fact. First, it's quite a big waste of product because this is quite big and second, it will be super heavy. So depending on how many flowers you place on your cake or where they're positioned on the cake, you don't want them to be super heavy. So I'd rather use uh, some styrofoam. <laughs> Thank you for the French. <laughs> uh, Mary, what size is your styrofoam ball? It's a three centimeters uh, diameter ball. Okay, so I'm going to use a ball tool to thin the edges of my pedal. So to thin the edges, you want to have your ball tool halfway on the pedal and halfway on the board. So not on the pedal itself because it's going to create like a, a crease in there. You want it outside the pedal, so right on the edge. Like so. And you want to use the bigger size of ball tool that you have because you don't want the edges to be too frilly. Again, for the ones who follow the previous tutorial, I've said before, the bigger the ball tool and the flatter effect you will get and the smaller ball tool, the more frilly effect you'll get. So I've got my pedals here. I'm going to take some edible glue this time from Squires and a paintbrush. So you can vein these if you want. Most people say that does it really matter because they're going they're going to be inside the rows and no one's going to really see them. That's that's quite true, but it still adds a little sort of realistic touch to your rose because even if it's inside the rose you can still see some of it. So you really want to um to have those veined. That said, if you're going for a very commercial cake and you don't really have the time to spend, um, let's say, two hours on a rose, you could just skip this um, step and have your petals not veined, at least the inner ones. Oh, hello, Paul. Very lucky to have Paul Bradford today with us. Talking about which, uh, feel free to follow Cakeflix. For those who don't know Cakeflix, well, I'd be very surprised, but it's an amazing um, website and um, Facebook page, and now it's on everything, um, YouTube and Rokun and everything. And you'll have uh, lots of tutorials. You've got a professional program, so feel free to tune in Cakeflix and have a look. 
Uh, from where is my bowl tool? That's a very good question. I think I bought it about three, four years ago from Serrat. So it's a brand in Italy, uh, which I can show you. So that's that spells Serrat, C-E-R-A-R-T. Uh, but I am not sure they do this one anymore. That said, uh, Squire's Kitchen's got quite a big range of bowl tools. And if you don't find what you're looking for, um, Sugar Delights in the US has got a whole new range of tools created by Robert Haynes, who's the, the person who taught me sugar flowers. And he's got an amazing uh, new set of bowl tools. So I'm going to take a little bit of glue and brush the glue just on the side here. So I'm leaving the bottom and I'm going to not completely the top, as you can see, it's just a little moon on the side. And I'm doing this on almost all my petals at the minute, actually four of them. Like so. So just a thin layer, remember that if you've got too much glue, your petals are not going to stick together, but they're going to slide. So I am sticking my petals on top of each other, slightly offset, as you can see. They're all at the same height. I don't know if you can see that. I'm hoping you can. You're welcome, Nexita. And that's my last one here. So now what I want to do, I want to roll this and I want to create the center of my flower. So I'm going to add now a little bit more glue here. And I hope you'll be able to see that properly. I am going to roll it like you would roll. I don't know. I don't know what you would be rolling like this. Well, just roll it quite tight in the center. You can add a little bit more glue at this step right here if you want to make sure everything's sticking. And keep rolling. Until you get that center. Okay. I'm just going to add a little bit of glue at the base here. Right, and now I am going to take my scissors and I'm going to trim it at the bottom. So let's say a good half of it, I'm going to cut. And I'm going to cut in four parts. So that's cut in halves. And now I'm going to cut it in four. So that's a little bit different from the usual way of making a rose, but for this type of rose, I found that it was the um, sort of easiest way. So I'm just trimming a little bit more. Okay, so as you can see, so that's still the top of my flower and these are um, split in four. I'm going to add a little bit of glue in there. So this is just because it's a very sort of specific shape of rose. So I'm adding some glue inside and I'm going to push this on top of my bowl here. So I'm hoping you can see. Hello, Joe. So, so I'm gluing these, securing the center. Make sure when you look at your rows from the top that it this is centered on your bowl. So you can already see the center of the rows and then press those to kind of flatten them a little bit. Okay, so this should be nice and secure and we are going to move on to the next petals. So I'm gonna stick that into the vase so that it can dry a little bit. And for the next ones, I've already got some uh, pre-cut here. So I'm moving on to the next size of cutter, which is this one. So just so that you know, that first size I've used is a just over three centimeters wide and about three and a half centimeters wide. So that's the first one I've used. And the second one I'm using is a 
just over four and a half centimeters high and four centimeters wide. So that's the two of I'm using at the minute. Yeah. So I'm using a light pink for these and I'm going to try to work as fast as I can because for these ones, as you can see on this rose, well, you might have seen it on the picture, but the color is different on the inside of the petal than like on the edge. So we have to do a progressive dusting, which means I've got to dust those as I go. So I'll get some paper ready on the side and I'll be dusting those as I go. So again, thin the edges with your ball tool. Don't apply too much pressure. Uh, you will just misshape your petals. You want to keep them as flat as you can. Halfway on the board, halfway on the petal. And I'm going to vein them. <laughs> Super de Boha. Deborah just said she's just gone on the website and she just bought the uh, kit of dusts. <laughs> yeah, I know it's an amazing one. Um, I use so many of those colors. They're, they're just really great. And they're absolutely edible, uh, all of them. Because, you know, in some brands you've got lovely colors, but not, not all of them are edible. So these ones are really edible, whether you're talking about the dust, the gels, the metallic colors, all of them are. And it's a really, really good thing. So for the dusting, I am going to use um, some rose, so rose dust. And the only not so squares uh, kitchen product I'm going to use is this series because that's a kind of very vibrant, flashy pink that I need for this specific rose. So I'm going to take a little bit of rose and a little bit of cerise. Okay. I'm going to move this aside because I don't want to have some dust all over my board. And what you want to do is from the outside to the inside. Hello, Laura. Hello, Emily. You're going to start with the cerise, which is the brightest stone, at, um, the brightest shade of her color. So this pointy side of the petal is the bottom. So we're dusting the top of the petal from the outside to the inside so that the color fades towards the center. And I want it quite vibrant in some places, like a lot more vibrant. So as you can see, this is a very, very bright, bright pink, almost kind of too bright for your eyes, but we will tone it down in a minute with the rose. I'm doing the same to the back. I'm doing it very, very quickly. Obviously, if I was going to do that for a cake uh, or for a competition, that would take me ages. Uh, but it's just to show you as quick as I can. Okay, so I've got my color here. I'm going to use a different paintbrush. I'm going to pick up a little bit of the rose color and I'm going to gently just brush the edges to tone that bright pink down. Make it slightly darker. It will look a lot more natural than if you just keep that very um, bright, bright pink. Okay, so I've got this. I'm going to do very quickly on the other ones. You can skip some of the areas, just have like a little bit on the edge and then come back here a lot more. Keep in mind we're doing something quite realistic so you don't want all your petals to look completely the same because they don't in nature. All of them are slightly different. Okay, coming back with the rose now. 
So you still have the very vibrant effect from the color underneath, but it looks a little bit more um, natural. Trying to see if I can see any questions at the same time. It's not so easy. So I've got two, and I'm going to do a third one here. one I'm gonna go all around the top of the petal so most of the color is on the edge and it's fading towards the center so it's getting lighter and lighter okay again turn it down a little bit with the rose color. That's it. So I've got three petals here and I'm going to move on a very, very soft sponge, a very soft foam. You could even use like a sponge sponge, like a one for the kitchen, clean one, obviously. And I'm going to come onto the foam pad like this very soft foam and using a ball tool I am just inside the petal pressing a little bit to give it a nice curl I don't know if you can see that but now it's got like a lovely curl here it's got a bend so the fact that we're doing it on something um, very very soft is for two reasons the first one the softer the sponge and the easier it is to get that cupped effect and the second reason is, as it's very soft, it won't erase the veins so much. Hello, Stephanie. Hello, Barbara. <laughs> it's okay, you'll be able to watch the video again. Don't worry. So I'm doing it on all three. And you've got to work quite quick because you don't want your petals to dry too, too much. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to use them. I'm going to take my paintbrush and some edible glue and I'm going to add a little bit of glue at the base here. So let's say half of your petal first, knowing that you can still add some more glue if you need once it's on the flower. So just adding some glue. So do, the glue is only on the edges, it's never in the center of your petal. Keep in mind that you want your flower to slightly open, so if you put some glue in the center, it'll just be stuck to the rest and you won't be able to see in between the petals. So before anything, I am going also to take my little bud here and add a little bit of that pink here. To kind of, you know, have a very similar uh, base color in there. So just brush very gently and then we can add the first petal so we're gonna go for slightly higher so when I say slightly higher it's about like one or two millimeters higher than the rest of the rose I don't know if you can see that right it is slightly slightly higher okay and I'm going to close one side and I need a little bit more glue so that's fine just add a little bit more right I'm going to take another one and at this point you can choose to either add three as a some sort of layer of three or just have two facing each other and add the third one after that so that's probably what I'm going to go for and at this point you'll want you want your rose to be um, quite closed it's still like the closed part of the bud inside so make sure this part here at the top stays nice and tight. I don't know if you can see that. Right. Bonjour, Fit Patisse. Ravi de te revoir ici. Hello, Vivienne. Oh, so nice to see everyone. It's very exciting. So... 
just trying to stick those bits together and I can now try to see where I want to add this one so at some point I always say there's no right or wrong just take your petal position it in front of your flower and have a look bonjour Marilyn ravi de te revoir également uh, and have a look, see where it fits the best, like where you think it looks the best as well. You can place it over or you can choose to tuck it under still. Oh, my hands are shaking. But just always make sure that your petal is straight, like you don't want it offset like this. The point has to be facing down. And I'm probably going to have it right there tucked inside, slightly opening, oh there's the dogs barking again, sorry for that, okay so I'm gonna go for something like this, must be barking uh, after the postman again, I absolutely hate him, I don't know why, Just going slightly more in there, and that's it. So that's what I've got. I'm gonna go for probably two more of the small ones. So I'm gonna put that aside, and I'm going to do exactly the same. So I've got some petals ready here. So I wish I could have dusted them before and they'd be ready, but if I had done so, they would be dried and I wouldn't be able to use them anymore. Hello Jackie, yeah, feel free to watch it again. Uh, it'll be available on um, Squire's Kitchen um, page, on the Facebook page. And um, yeah, feel free. And if you have any questions after that, uh, also feel free to pop me a message, whether it's uh, on uh, Facebook or Instagram, I'm more than happy to always help. So, thin the edges, vein it very quickly. Okay. Thank you, Jackie. So for those who haven't seen the colors, um, this is as a base rose uh, from Squire's Kitchen as a uh, gel color. And now to dust, I am using a mix of rose, which is the powder, and just a little bit of cerise from Edible Art because I didn't have uh, that sort of very vibrant for this, this type of rose, didn't have that color. So I'm going to do quickly the same, taking two petals, and I'm going to dust that as fast as I can. So, a little bit of cerise. So the good thing when you do this is as you're having different tones on your petal, and obviously you're not sticking the inside of the petal, well, from when you look at the rose from the outside, you will be able to see all those pretty shades of pink, the, the light one on the inside and the dark one um, on the edges. So adding now that rose color to tone it down, doing the same to the back, of course. And make sure you fade that color in, fade it in. Thank you, Vilma. Hello. Hello, Janet. I'm glad that you were enjoying it. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me. So that's it for this one. I'm going to go for much lighter one on the sides like um this is just go very dark at the top of the flower and then I'll go lighter on the sides so again try to have the petals as much different uh, as you can from one to the other you will have a much more natural look So 
I would spend hours dusting this normally. Um, but I'm not going to keep you until 10 p.m. tonight. So I'm just going to do this very fast. So back on the soft spawn, spawn, um, soft foam pad. Again, a little bit of pressure on the pedal to curl the bottom here. And now what you can do as well is using a small cell stick, you can also use a cocktail stick, a toothpick, um, whatever uh, looks the same. Wait, let me just think. Ah, uh, that's very true, Pauline. That's, I don't think, you know, most people, especially customers, they don't realize how much uh, effort and time and love we put in flowers. Um, but we do love it, don't we? So. So just take your cell stick and when you place it at the back of your flower on the top here, I'm just going to curl slightly. So I'm curling using my finger and thumb, curling around the toothpick um, to have a little effect on my two petals here. And same, I'm going to apply some glue at the base here, knowing that if I need some more, I can add it once it's on the flower. You don't want too much glue to start with. So taking my flower again, I'm going to see where I want those to be. I'm going to go slightly higher again. So just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit higher. Okay, and I'm going to attach this. And where am I going to add this one? Probably opposite. I quite like that look when they're facing sort of each other, slightly offset. They're still not right in front of each other, but they are sort of um, in front of each other. I'm going to close this. And that's when you can start playing with the opening of the rose. See, as this is not stuck, I can play with it because, well, there's no glue here. I might try to move that stand a little bit. That's it. Uh, Vilma, now I am using some florist paste. Um, this is Squire's Kitchen florist paste. I can show you the packaging again. So it is um, specific for flowers. Sugar paste would be far too soft. It wouldn't hold the, the shape as, um, as well as uh, florist paste does. And obviously it would take ages to dry. All right. So I don't know what you think of that at the minute. Oh, I think it looks... It looks quite pretty, I really like it. Okay, so I still got some foam showing here, like styrofoam, so I'm going to move on to bigger petals now. So if you remember, I have five petals in the center and I have used one, two, three, four, five, five petals of the next size um, on the outside. You're welcome, Vilma. So, Coming back to my petals, these are bigger ones. So this is the next size in the set. So I am going to show you. This is now a just under five centimeters width and five and a half high. Again, it comes in a very pretty set from Squire's Kitchen. Uh, the good thing also about these sets is because they have been designed by Naomi and she has been uh, writing this book as well, the, the uh, cutters kind of match the uh, tutorials in the book. So that is really interesting for you um, if, if you want to have a look at those. So I'm going to do the same, thin the edges halfway on the foam and halfway on the, the petal. Thank you, Matthew. And uh, I'm going to vein these. So, I've got some lovely veins on there. And I'm still going to go for two at the minute. So, depending on what like variety of rows, um, obviously this technique wouldn't suit, for example, an avalanche rose, or it wouldn't suit a memory lane rose. Um, they're all very different types of roses, so. This fits this one. Obviously, not everyone knows about this type of rose. I didn't know about this type of rose before uh, we kind of 
had a look at it. Um, but yeah, it's very interesting. So what I was going to say is I'm going for layers of two at the minute, but for, for example, an avalanche rose, you'd be going for rows of three. So depending on what you do, you've got different options. Coming back here, so it just looks a little bit of a mess. So well, I can probably come this way and I'm going to do the same. So just with my bright cerise color, which is a lot too bright, but which gives a very nice and vibrant shade of pink to start with. It's like a very nice layer, like base layer of color and tone it down with the rose color. So doing that very quickly. Right, going to do that to the back as well. Don't hesitate to have some darker areas. You can even have a darker area come in a lot more towards the center, but just make sure then you fade the rest of the color as well. Fade it in. Right, got another one here. Quickly gonna do this one. So the quicker you work on these, the better, obviously. Because as we said before, it is going to dry pretty fast, so you end up risking it to crack. Um, but it just takes a little bit of practice and you'll be perfectly fine. So fade it in. What you could also do, I can show you in a minute, is to make those veins at the back pop a little bit more. So what you would want to do, for example, is with the side of your flat paintbrush, grab a little bit of dust and go across your veins. And I'm going to show you the difference. So I'm going across the veins at a 90 degree angle so for example, this is the back of this one and I haven't done it on this one, but this is the back of that one and ooh, oopsie, and you can see all the veins, all the details. Um, it makes a big difference. Now that I've done it to one, I've got to do it to the other because otherwise it won't look as nice. This is something I tend to do on the uh, outer petals a lot and depending on what variety of rose you're doing, you could even go for greens like some white avalanche roses have lovely green veins at the back and they're really, really pretty. Hello, Rachel. Hello, Cameroon. Are the bristles on your brush soft? They are quite soft. Um, it's just a normal brush, to be honest. It's not like a, a specific type of brush. It's just a um, flat brush, but it's quite soft still. Yeah, you do have like a big, big difference when you see all those veins. I'm gonna come back to my foam, very soft foam here. So be careful once you've done that, obviously the side that you're using your ball tool on is the inside of your petal. All right, so you're not using the ball tool on the side where you have those lo lovely veins now. Okay, so using the ball tool here, and we're gonna do something a little bit different for these petals. I'm going to come back on my soft normal foam pad and with a cell stick I'm going to just do a little indent on two areas for example okay and I don't know if you can see that I made tiny tiny indents right and with my cell stick I'm going to curl 
the petal in between those areas, which means I'm going to do one curl here and one on the side, one on the side. So again, grab your petal, twist between your finger and thumb, and I'm going to do the same here. And where you've got that little indent, you can actually press a little bit to have a, um, like a little crease on the petal. Those dogs are going to drive me nuts. Okay, work on this again. And I'm doing the same here. So again, two little creases. And I'm curling backwards. So curl backwards. And you can pinch where that little crease is. like so. So you can see the shape of your petal now. It's got a lot different. I might turn it like this. Uh, which brand of veiner have you used? This, um, this veiner is from Sugar Delights, uh, from Sugar Flower Studio. Um, it's a really good one, but there are some amazing ones on Squatters Kitchen as well. Uh, it's just that I've got this material. Uh, Mary, this veiner actually comes from the US. Sugar Delights is in the US, so you might want to order uh, it from them, maybe. Uh, this one is for actually the um, Memory Lane Rose. They have lots of other ones. Be careful if you want this one to pick the Memory Lane Rose. Oh, thank you, Rachel. Bit of glue now. Still adding the glue to the bottom only. So it's like a little V, just right under half of my petal, only on the edges. Right, and I'm going to try and position that now. So I think this looks quite pretty. Let me just check. So I'm going to stop going any higher now. I'm not going any higher. And I'm going to. So it's almost touching, you know, the point of my pedal is now, it is not almost, it's touching my wire at the base here. Okay, like that. And for this one, I'm going to go, well, same, quite opposite, but slightly um, offset. Ooh. Careful that it is still sticking. It's just moved. So if it is moving, you just add a tiny, tiny bit of glue right there and press. Just press and hold it for a few seconds until you're sure that it is stuck. Right. Let's go back to that second one. Let's have a look, move it around, and it's probably going to go there. So same, push it down if you need a little bit more glue, which I think I probably need right there. Press, you can hold it upside down and let gravity do the job. All right. And that's what we have at the minute. I'm going to add a few more petals. Oh, quite difficult to show because obviously I've got some gaps here that I need to fill. So I'm going to take two more. So Emily, what board do you use to roll your petals out? I can never get mine very thin because my board is very small. Um, this is a board from Cell Cakes. That's from the UK. Um, I'm pretty sure Squire's Kitchen has got some normal size um, um, boards. I would have to check with them. I can check the sizes on Squatters Kitchen's website and uh, if, if you want to pop me a message, I can uh, then give you an answer.
well i'm hoping it's only for you sam that the video crashed on my side it still seems okay and i'm very sorry if it's not i mean can everyone still see What are you doing with your rose in between gluing on the petals? It is just in a vase there, standing, because, well, it's the easiest. You can use a dummy. Um, yeah, sure, Emily, no problem. Just pop me a message and I'll, I'll tell you about the size of the, um, the, the boards. Um, yeah, you could use a dummy or uh, a vase. I, I like to use vases. I've got, obviously, tons of vases for um, display, competition weddings etc um so I'm, I'm used to have a vase on my table cool okay thank you for the answers it is always a bit stressing when it's a live demo i always hope that everything's gonna be okay and that there is not going to be any um issues with the connection it's always a bit scary but during weekdays, we should be fine. It's usually during the weekend that it gets super busy in this area. And um, especially with lockdown and everyone being online at the same time. It, is, it has been quite difficult. So front and back. Fade it in. So always try to fade the color in. You don't want to have like the color stopping uh, like all of a sudden. And it has to fade in unless it's a specific flower that requires uh, that sort of, you know, effect. Uh, usually it's more of a fading color. Trying to go quick, quick, quick. Okay, that one's ready, and doing the same on this one. Thank you. Um, oh, yeah, Rachel. Um, they, they have an amazing lace mix, uh, which actually stays flexible, uh, which is pretty rare. I've, had, I've tested lots of different brands when it comes to lace, and unfortunately, most of them tend to crack once it's dried. Um, Squire's Kitchen's ones stay super flexible, and you can bend it, put it in shape, do bows and all sorts with it. Uh, it's absolutely amazing. And just for the Vayner Cunningham, uh, it is from uh, Sugar Flower Studio. Not to, um, I've seen uh, someone saying Sugar Art Studio. That's actually a different brand. Sugar Art Studio is in the US. It is run by Giovanna Smith. And Sugar, Sugar Flower Studio is uh, in the UK, manufactured in the US, and it's run by um, Robert Haynes and Jennifer Dons. So there are two different brands. So if you're looking for this specific Vayner on the wrong website, that is not going to work. Um, Josephine, what colors am I using? So I've pre-colored the paste with some gel color from Squire's Kitchen Rose. So that's for the outer petals. Uh, for the inner petals, I have used a mix of rose and cyclamen, three parts of rose and one part of cyclamen. And now I am dusting uh, the edges of the petals with um, some cerise, which is not a Squire's Kitchen color because they don't have it. Uh, and then turning it down with a little bit of rose from Squire's Kitchen. Yeah, it is hard for a brand to have like every single tone of color, every single shade on the planet. It is absolutely, absolutely impossible. So, um, this one, which is a very, very bright one, I had to have a look elsewhere. But again, as I said, you've got quite a few colors in that kit. I think a good six, 24 or 20, 20 something uh, in the Squire's Kitchen uh, kit. And it's amazing colors. They work really well for lots of flowers, uh, lots of leaves. I'm not very happy with this one there. I'm gonna cheat a little bit and bring it down 
to hide it a little bit and that's it so again use the ball tool inside on the base of the petal here to cup it on a very soft um, sponge or um, foam pad and I'm coming back here I could have done the uh, hmm, I forgot but I could have done the uh, veins on the outside now because I've started and I can't really stop so for those who maybe haven't seen on the back of your petal take your brush and go at a 90 degree angle with the flat side of the brush to catch the veins and give it a very sort of natural look and it will you know bring all the details from the veiner uh, bring it out i don't know if you can actually see but it is adding a lot of detail to the back of your flower so at a 90 degree angle with the flat side of the brush just turn it down a little bit that's it so again as i've just done before i'm going to do those little indents you can have them closer or a little bit more um separate like far apart And with my little cell stick, I am rolling, like twisting in between my finger and thumb around the cell stick. Again, if you don't have a cell stick, you can use a cocktail stick, a toothpick, a barbecue skewer, whatever. It works just the same. You could even use the back of a paintbrush, small paintbrush, use the back of your paintbrush. It works just as fine. Okay, I'm gonna do the same here. I'm gonna have a very small one there. And then, so you could have more than obviously three curls. I'm only curling them three times, but you could have two, you could have four, you could have five, depending on the size of your petal and the size, like the dimension of the curls, feel free to um, just play with the shape of your rose. Again, they're all different. Um, yeah, just have a little play with them. A little bit more glue at the bottom here only on the edges I'm going to take my little rose here and place it I might try to see how it looks if I tuck it in am I happy with that hmm, I could be or just right on on the edge here let's see if I can tuck it in yes I can still tuck it in because it is still slightly soft I might just need to bring that camera a little bit up because that rose is slightly higher than normal so you probably can't see well that's a lot better i'll have this one here and let me see i'll say i can have that one there that's where they look the best to me and I'm going to add a few more petals, but you already have an idea of uh, what this rose would look like. I might just add one extra petal, just like a very like curly one at the bottom so that you can see how to do this as well. So I'll just add one, but then again, you could add probably another five petals to this. Um, it would look uh, as pretty, but as I would like to show you the leaves, um, I'm going to stop right there. I'm trying to look for my things. There's so much stuff on my desk at the minute with all the colors and the veiners and the cutters. Okay, so quickly veined. Just quickly again, going to dust that. 
So again, color-wise, the um, petals on the outside of the rose, like the ones that are the most on the outside, are the ones who usually have like, you know, the rain, the wind, causing a little bit of F, like, you know, issues. So you could add some very dark colors or you could even add some greens or some browns where the petals start to tear. Um, it's just a, you know, like a personal preference, I guess. Um, and if you want it to look super, super realistic, you can play with those colors as well. Or a dark uh, burgundy color, aubergine, those types of colors. Um, you could definitely have a go. Right, tone it down. Right. Just going to. It is still fresh, so I'm just widening it a little bit with my hands because I want it slightly wider. Okay, cut this like so. So you can see it's like not flat anymore it's curling um thank you that's very sweet to read all your comments and i'm probably going to curl that one so you can even do that with your fingers if you feel comfortable about that it's just to give it a little bit of shape and that one, I'm just going to place it on the outside of the rose, but curling outwards. So take your rose. Where is that one going to go? Hmm. Well, there's lots of different places it could go, but anyway. So this one's going to go slightly lower. So I'm placing it lower. Don't really focus on these because you could add a calyx. So what you can do is either trim it or just wrap it around the wire and push it down. No one's going to see that once you've got the calyx on. And you want this one to open a little bit. So you're pulling it outwards. Just pulling it out so that it's the petals opening on the side. I think I'm quite happy with it at the minute. I really like it. You see all the shades of color of the pinks on the inside. It's really cool. So just to show you very quickly, I'll finish here with the rose. I just wanna it's already been an hour. Time just flies. So I'm just going to show you quickly those leaves. So I've pre-made some leaves. Um, for you to um, be able to see how to attach them together but basically I've used um, just to tell you again a square kitchen for its paste and I've used a mix uh, of one part mint and one part holy ivy to reach that sort of very very dark um, green thank you Mary what size wire are you using? So for the center, for the rose itself, it is an 18 gauge wire. And for my leaves, I have used 28 gauge wire and I'm going to attach them on a 26 gauge wire. So again, for those who don't know, the higher the number and the thinner uh, the wire. So for example, a 30 is a lot, lot thinner than a 16. So 16s and 18s are usually for stems and then I would say 20, 22, 24 it's mainly big buds or thick leaves and 26, 28, 30 or 4 are for small, small leaves, small petals, anything that's quite light. This is very light even if it's quite, uh, it's still a big petal but um, yeah so that's what I would be using. And for the dusting I want to dust them super super quickly. I'm probably going to do just one, uh, dust just one, and, and you'll see the technique anyway to make it slightly faster for you. I'm using a big uh, sort of like makeup brush, 
blend those two colors in to have a very pretty vibrant green and very gently you're going to brush it all over the surface of that leaf to give it more color it is more vibrant you want to do the back as well but less than the that less than the front because it tends to be a little a little bit lighter uh, than the front of your leaf right what i like to use them is like a red color so here i'm going to use uh, some cyclamen again so that's the cyclamen color and i'm bringing a little bit of red so on that central vein i bring it up at the minute it looks a little bit weird but i am going to glaze it for you and you will see the difference so a little bit of red at the bottom I remember uh, actually entering at Cake International and I had made a few leaves for a ranunculus flower and um, the judge wanted some red on the on the leaves so always think about red on, red on your leaves that's a little uh, but I oh, know not all leaves have got some red so yeah just have a look and I'm going to brush the veins at the back with, did you pierce the leaves with the wire? No, I've uh, rolled, rolled out some paste on a grooved board. So on the side where you've got the vein and that's where you want to insert the, the, um, the wire. I will show you that in probably another tutorial. Uh, I'll, I'll see with Squires if we can um, maybe do a video about foliage and um, berries or something like that and show you a bit more. Um, of the flower world. So I brush at the 90 degree angle and I hope you can see those all those veins kind of pop in. Look at that difference. No red, reds, right? So reds always help when it comes to adding some depth and some like you know like the little mountains from from the veins. Right? So this is what I'm going to do and I want to um, I want to glaze this one leaf for you uh, when it comes to glazing you have got two options you've got the quick and easy lazy version that's your option one and that's using spray glaze which is perfectly fine ex except that you can't sort of adapt or adjust um, the the sheen on your leaves but that's what we're going to do. Second option being buying some um, liquid glaze, which is a 100% glaze, and buying some very high percentage alcohol, like a 98, 99% alcohol, which is not always available. Uh, some, but yeah, you can find some online. And for example, for a very, very shiny leaf, you would use a solution like a dipping solution made of 75% of glaze and 25% of alcohol. Now for rose leaves, you want something a little bit less shiny. So you'd go for a 50-50. And if you're, if you're glazing a flower, like if I was to glaze this rose, for example, you would go for the opposite, 25% of glaze and 75% of alcohol to have something that will fix the colors on the petals, but that won't be shiny at all. So have a think about that. Uh, I usually have different boxes with different types of glaze at home. Um, it is a bit a bit annoying, like it is a bit more work, but you can do more things with it. But let's say that the um, spray varnish is the uh, easiest option. You can find it on Squares Kitchen website, by the way. So just a little bit front and back. And for those who are annoyed with glaze, because glaze can be pretty annoying when it goes onto your table and everything, um, Squires has got a glaze cleaner that works really, really well just to put a little bit of that cleaner on a bit of paper and wipe off your table. It will all come out super, super easy. And I found out that this is very useful as well to clean your brushes when you are painting with cocoa butter. It dissolves the cocoa butter instantly which is, to be honest, like just something magic. So that's my leaf now. So I'm gonna show you one leaf without any color. So that's the, the same base color. 
and that's the leaf once it's been dusted and glazed. So the glaze will be, a, it will dry out, it will be a lot less shiny, but it looks a lot more realistic. I mean, if I place them, you probably can see, or I'm, I'm hoping you can see. It's always hard to tell on the camera. Wait, we'll do it like that. Well, ho hopefully you can see a difference, but there is a difference. Yeah, that way you can see the difference a lot more. And I just want to um, tape it for you to see. Um, what have I done with my tape? I ain't got no clue. Another one. Right. So I've got some tape here. It's some half width tape and I'm using a 26 gauge wire. Again, obviously, if I was to uh, do it normally, I would have uh, colored and glazed all the leaves. Uh, but it's just for time issues. Um, I'm not doing it. I'm taking my wire and using my tape. I am taping a little bit up to the top of my wire just to make it easier for me and not to have like the wire, the tape and a leaf in my hands. At least I've got two of those already sorted. Thank you, Roshana. Oh yeah, Claire, it does bring it to life. It's amazing. When it comes to uh, those leaves, I've got a little drawing for you. Where is it? Here, how you can see. Rose leaves usually come in stems of three, five, seven, nine, etc., etc. So you'd have the biggest one at the top and then you would have like smaller ones and then smaller, smaller, smaller. One of the biggest mistake I always see on leaf work is that these here, usually people would do something like this and then they'd have the leaf poking out so much with so much wire. Where if you have a look at a rose stem, a rose leaf stem, you don't have that much um, sticking out so it's a lot closer to the main stem and that's what we are going to do so I'm going to take my biggest biggest leaf here and I am taping it right on top of my wire here so I'm not leaving any of that wire showing it's not nothing like this it is right here and I'm taping And then I'm taping down, so hold the tape at an angle and tape down. And then you're going to take your first leaf to position it. You don't want it overlapping, but you don't want it too low. So it has to be quite close to your main leaf there, but no, not overlapping. So I'm holding it to the side like this just to, to see if it's going to be right. So yes, I think that's okay to me. And as you can see, I'm taping it right on top of my main stem, not at any angle yet. And I'm taping right under my leaf here. And I'm going to add the same size of leaf on top of it here, exactly at the same height. So I haven't gone any lower. It's exactly at the same height and I'm doing it right on top of my previous leaf. So I'm going twice around, making sure everything's secured, and then I'm taping down. And that's when you can very gently grab your leaf and open it to the side. And they're facing each other. They're exactly at the same level. You can definitely see the difference of color. I can see it on the camera now. So yeah. And then you have to do the same with the smaller ones. So you just gauge where they are supposed to go. So I think here would look a lot pretty, but obviously you could have them just slightly lower, but not very low because it doesn't make no sense and not overlapping because, well, it's not supposed to be like this. So same, I'm placing it on top of my wire. And again, I'm taping right under my leaf. I'm not leaving. I'm just gonna show you that mistake I was talking about. Most people would do that. And then they spread the leaf out and they've got that big stem there. Well, no, that's a no. Well, it depends on what flower or what leaf you're doing. But for a rose, it is not like so. So tape it right here you could have like a miniature little bit of stem there but it wouldn't be so big 
take the second one and tape it right on top of the first one again they are exactly at the same level if you tape one lower then they won't be facing each other vivian which uh, large leaf cutter is that um uh, these are again some um, sugar flower studio veiners and cutters for the leaves but again squares kitchen has got some so depending on where you leave or leave, leave all your preference or also the price because they are different prices uh, feel free to pick one or the other marnie you make it look so easy <laughs> it's not that hard to be honest but yeah try to have a guess how many leaves i've been taping <laughs> quite a few and then bring those out very gently you can turn them a little bit facing the top like so so turn them a little bit and you have a rose stem well obviously all should be that color what you can also do because even if I've been using green tape, what I would normally do, especially if I'm doing some competition work, I would take some more dust on my paintbrush and I would dust um, over the, uh, the tape as well to make it match the color of the leaves. So it'd be the same colors. I would add a little bit of that red on the stem where they meet. Your method of putting the leaves are really nice tip. Thank you, Nixida. I'm happy that you like it. Hello, Sarah. Thank you so much. Um, not sure if we've got a little bit more time for it, like doing the calyx, but well, I guess since I'm here, I can always show you and then we can assemble it together because I've talked to you about that um, orchard calyx and I can quickly, quickly do that. It will take like five minutes. So I'm taking a little bit of paste. I'm going to do like the easy version for you, not even talking about the stem or anything, just to show you how easy it is. So I am rolling out some green paste. Again, this is a mix one-to-one -one mint and holy ivy from Squares Kitchen. And you can get a lovely deep color. Obviously I've used quite a bit of color to get like a rich tone, but um, yeah you can achieve that pretty easily. So, give it a good wiggle. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome, Joan. I'm glad you like it. Actually, when you are traveling, if you're traveling with a cake and you're going to a venue, it is a lot safer to travel with your leaves shut like this and then reopen the, the whole stem at the venue. Uh, it travels a lot safer. So think about traveling to somewhere with your leaves. Well, it will help a lot and you will have a lot less breakage. So I'm taking this out and I am just going to thin the edges of um, my sepals. These are called the sepals from the rose. So just thin in just to show you um, the finish on the rose. And usually these have got a few cuts. So I'm using some curved scissors. They've, they've got like a little curve going outwards. I don't know if you can see that curve going there. And um, if you can see like, for example, this is the head and the arms and the legs trying to figure, trying to see like a little guy. Head, arms and legs, usually on the head and the legs, you'd have little snips. So hold your scissors parallel to the side of um, the paste and do little snips little snips because what happens if you hold it like this well you won't have lovely snips you'll just have like uh, big nasty cuts when you just want something quite pretty and uh, dainty so little snips I don't know if you can see those snips there little snips so curved scissors are definitely your best friend to do that. And you can do it on both sides. You don't have to add many. You can have like one, two, three, or you could have a lot more depending on what you want to do. I'm just going to go for a one. You can spread it a little bit. I'm going to use a bit more glue. Oops. And I'm adding the glue to the center here. So, come on glue, that's it. 
and just a little bit at the base of each sepal. I don't want to go too high because this is not a rosebud, it's not supposed to be covering the whole rose. I want them to be bending a little bit outwards. Um, so I'm just adding a little bit of glue at the base. And again, you can always add some more glue once it's on the flower. Bring that to your hand, laying flat on your hand and using your rose here, you're gonna poke it in the center and this is gonna go in between my fingers and I'm just sliding it and then turning it upside down. So make sure everything's sticking. Okay, so this needs to stick, but you want them to be, you know, kind of falling down a little bit like so. And you want to be able to play with the movement of the sepals on your calyx as well. And as I said, if you want them to be a little bit more like attached, you can always add a little bit of glue and stop um like stick them a little bit more usually the more the rose opens the more these tend to go down so once it's really close bud they're all facing up and then as it opens uh they will tend to go down what size wire did you use for the rose um wire on the rose is an 18 gauge wire uh leaves are a 28 stem for the leaf is a 26 and what size is your calyx, uh, calyx cutter, please? So this is an orchard calyx. And let me just have a look because I've noted it down. It is the uh, R11C from Squire's Kitchen website. So that's the calyx cutter, 70 millimeters XXL. I know orchard have got lots of different sizes, even a lot bigger than this. But um, uh, the R11C is this one that I've used. And it's written at the back, so when you have a look at your cutters, there's always a little sign saying what size it is. Well, what reference? So this is R11C, 70 millimeters, so seven centimeters. So that's it, we've got that now. Just to um, finish up and attach the leaves, I wanna do a little stem to my rose. So taking a little bit of paste, and I'm going to twist around my wire, twist, 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 twist. Add just a little bit of glue under my calyx here, just to make sure that it attaches to the calyx. So bring it up, up, and you want to be, when it reaches the calyx, roughly the thickness that you want to achieve. You don't want it super thick. So usually most people take a lot too, too much pace to do that, and the, get big, uh, big stems, but yeah, you don't want this too thick. So twist in between your finger and thumb to have it nicely secured and as even as possible. Um, yeah, so the leaves were 28, so each leaf is on a 28 gauge wire and I have attached them all onto 26 gauge wire. A 26 gauge wire for the leaves themselves would be too thick. For this size of leaf at least. Okay, so I've got a lovely stem right here and I'm going to take just a little bit more uh, of that tape and I'm going to tape my leaves onto my flower. So I've attached it under my paste. Usually I would wait for this to dry because this is going to damage it a little bit because it's super um super fresh and flexible and i'm going to attach my leaves right here so just going to pull it outwards a little bit so it doesn't press too much on the paste and tape down tape it down so i could tape it down all the way to the end but that's it, we've got a lovely my dad's rose with a lovely stem. I'm just going to tilt the camera again so that you can see it a little bit better. Hello again, everyone. So this is our rose. This is the one I made previously. So as you can see, this one's got multiple leaves. It's got, it's got a little butt there. 
Um, oh yeah, you could you could probably have them together in an arrangement. So I'm really hoping you liked this tutorial. Again, if you have any questions about it or about anything else, feel free to send me a message. And um, so I'm available on Facebook, Instagram, email, uh, whatever. And of course, if you fancy any other demonstration and tutorial, feel free to post a message on Squares Kitchen website or on Squares Kitchen um, Facebook. Um, it will work a lot more. Uh, or on Squares Kitchen Instagram as well. And yeah, feel free to tell us which flower you want to see, which leaves, which berries, uh, or whatever you want to learn. And I am more than happy to um, show you uh, how to do that. So that was lovely to be here again. I hope you've enjoyed it. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to send me a message and I will show you um, some new techniques very shortly. Have a lovely evening or a lovely day, depending on where you are. Stay safe and bye-bye. Uh, See you very soon. Thank you for following us.